Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, live blog here. Um, I just got some time uh, to um, record some opinions of mine. I'm not. I'm in an undisclosed location. However, um, I will say for the record, because uh, right now where I'm currently at is kind of quiet. So I got some spare time because I gotta gotta stick around here for a few hours take care of some business but other than that um, I should be fine um, this is the wrestling enthusiast live blog episode 2 this is my second blog uh, I'm E Peralta and uh, yeah I would like to talk about because a subject that kind of crossed my mind a little bit in the professional wrestling business and that is in the late 2000s did wrestling did the wrestling industry suffer some sort of major decline that was similar to how it was in 1995 however it was worse I mean what do you think your opinions on that you know because uh, I I've, I've have a few in my own I mean I just I, I got a couple of things that I like to talk about I mean just a few things here this will not be a long blog I'm just I'm gonna keep it uh, like relatively my goal is to keep it at least half an hour or more but um anyway so back to what I was saying what did, did the late 2000s did professional wrestling industry suffer a steep decline and there's a there's a lot of wrestling fans out there because it came to my mind it crossed my mind that a lot of wrestling fans do agree that there was a really uh, shitty time to be a wrestling fan um, my my personal opinion was because everybody if you look at the internet wrestling community the IWC which is nick dubbed for short the internet wrestling communi community is filled with whiners complainers bitches and marks and um some of them are actually keep kayfabe others just you know they they're just traditional wrestling fans me, uh, me personally, I just I don't like to contradict. I just like to showcase my own opinions, and I have certain opinions of my own regarding uh, matches and shows and all that stuff. So I do tend to um, give strong opinions, and uh, ones that I like, one I dislike, ones that I really like, and others that I dislike. So I just thought, you know, I have since I have a little bit of time here, I thought I would just discuss. The, the subject of professional wrestling's sharp decline, in my opinion, back in the late 2000s. Um, first of all, if you go into any wrestling news sites, as if you're a fan, um, you notice that there's, there's always some news headlines of uh, WWE will push John Cena, or WWE would, would give a major push to... Uh, to Roman Reigns, or which, by the way, um, stay tuned to Monday Night Raw. I believe he's supposed to get his um, leukemia update and give us an update. Um, according to what I've heard in the rumors, that Rome, Roman Reigns might be coming back, not anytime soon, but his prognosis looks like it's pretty good. We'll have to wait and see because, like I said, it's only a rumor, and supposedly there was a there was another rumor afloat that it might have been spoiled because he had a big announcement. On Monday Night Raw, in a in a few days, so I think that uh, he he might have a positive, it might be a positive news story. But you never know. We'll just have to tune in to find out. But it's looking more leaning more towards it that way. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Certain wrestlers and superstars getting pushed. Um, if a lot of the IWC people bunch of sometimes a bunch of faceless individuals you know a lot of them a lot of them have some strong opinions a lot of them have some good opinions and a lot of them you know like what they see and a lot of them dislike what they see and some of them are just straight fucking assholes they just like to talk shit and complain bitch moan about every little fucking thing that they see and you know you, you can't be perfect and I know a lot of promotions can't be perfect out there like I, I, earlier in the first wrestling blog, the first live blog I've done, uh, I mentioned that I, I I griped about the 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 fan response from the Lafayette 
show in Monday Night Raw. I, I, I gave them a shit. So, you know, I told them... I told them to go fuck themselves, and that's what I basically said, because I said, nah, they, don't, they don't know a good show if they fucking were blindfolded. And and stick a fucking carrot in their ass. But, anyway. Um, no, that's not the point. What, what I wanted to talk about is about the late 2000s, and, and which is probably prompted to what, what's been going on recently with a lot of these um, put these stars, these superstars that a lot of fans groan about when they get a push. This is what my opinion is about it. When I was growing up watching wrestling, um, mm -hmm. when I grew up watching wrestling, I, um, I was, I was watching it since I was three, and that was back in the Hulk Hogan days. You know, we obviously didn't know better. So, and then once Hulk Hogan moved to WCW, we were thinking, "Whoa, who's all these? Who's the heck? Who the hell's gonna, who's gonna come up next and step over, step in the line and take and lead the way? Who's gonna do that?" And we ended up finding out it was ended up being Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Lex Luger tried, but he failed, at least in the WWF. But that's another, that's another story, but. Yeah, there was the new generation era and all that stuff. I grew up a little like that when I was a little kid. Then we started seeing Gold Dust, and then we started seeing Stone Cold Steve Austin. Then we started seeing The Rock come up slowly but surely crawling up. And, of course, WCW was trying to make everything competitive. That's what I basically grew up on. Um, everybody knows about, if you're a true wrestling fan, you knew about the Monday Night Wars. You know, the Monday Night Wars um, was the, basically the shit, in my opinion. And, um, you know, me, I was, we, I kind of grew up with basic cable. And it was basic cable that didn't have USA Network until they, until we had, like, uh, an upgrade in our package back, in, like, in 99 or 2000. And then we started watching WWF again. But I kind of knew what was going on. I remember they, they tried to show um, Shotgun Saturday Night. I remember that show. Um, yeah, I, 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 that, that was a lot of fun to watch back in those days. That's how you kind of kept up a little bit. Because basically all they showed was WCW. It was always WCW, no matter what. So that's how we pretty much knew Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, and Diamond Dallas Page and all them. It was getting pretty popular right until the Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Attitude Era. Boy, that was a shit, wasn't it? Okay, so anyway, I'm not talking about the Attitude Era. I'm talking about what we grew up with. So, basically, we kind of knew, when, once we got older and wiser, and we kept watching professional wrestling, you knew for a fact that we, they did everything they can to make the show exciting. It was like, top this and top that. That was pretty much what. It was always over the top. Matter of fact, if you if you were subscribed to the network like I am, you you you, you watched the Raws from ni late 1997 all the way to probably like 2001. Every there was not really any show at all that I could recall that was bad. Yeah, there had some shitty matches here and there, but I mean, no, no, there was some. There was not there was not a single show that made you want to watch the week after. So you know that's the that's the whole thing. It's pretty cool. And, um, I, I, I always get a great interest of watching it, man. Hey, how you doing, Pablo? Um, yeah, so I just, we just basically grew up with that shit. Then 2002 came. And, and in my opinion, I, I still thought it was the Attitude Era. Even though they, they stopped, um, making it WWF and turned it to WWE, you still had Stone Cold, you still had The Rock, pop up every now and then. This was the uprising of Brock Lesnar. And um, slowly but surely, he started to get a push. And then all of a sudden, June of 2002, that was when we saw John Cena. Then we also saw Randy Orton. We started seeing a lot of these guys that we still see every now and then. Randy Orton's still wrestling right now to this day on SmackDown. But that's not what I'm trying to talk about. What I'm trying to talk about is the difference between the Attitude Era, the Ruthless Aggression Era, 
and the what I dub as the PG era. Uh, the reason why I dub it like that is because they say it's the universal the universal era era. I think I call it the PG era because in my opinion it was complete utter shit. That's what I thought it was. Shit. I'll I'll get to that right now, but um well yeah, ECW. Oh yeah, I remember ECW. Yeah, that they had some pretty wacky crazy shows, didn't they? Yeah, ECW too. Could have been a shit. Then Paul Paul Heyman fucked it up a little bit. Ran the company bankrupt. Couldn't run the television production for TNN. Then again, TNN, I think, was owned by, fuck, CBS or some shit? I have no idea. They probably had something to do with pushing wrestling off the air. Just like the way TNT tried to push Nitro off the air, and then ended up, WWF ended up buying it. Vince ended up buying that shit. For literally pennies on the dollar. And, yeah, that's basically what happened. Um, well, once that, once that all that shit went down, the Ruthless Aggression era started, and we had some of the superstars, you had Kurt Angle, you had Randy Orton, you had John Cena, you had Rey Mysterio, um, Brock Lesnar was around, Big Show, oh yeah, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, uh, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, you know, it was pretty much... What has been going on, but, well, my opinion, my opinion is the difference between these three eras, the Attitude Era, Ruthless Aggression Era, and uh, the PG Era, um, is the repetitiveness between the PG Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era. Because if you think of it this way, look how long the Attitude Era lasted. How long did it last? Uh, late 97? And all the way till they say the uh, the Attitude Era ended at WrestleMania 17 back in April 1st, 2001. That's when they said the era ended. Me personally, I think it ended during the Ruthless Aggression Era. What year? I say uh, March of 2007. March of 2007. That was it. I, I personally think that, well, you know, uh, the, I, well, we are a live show. I'm, I'm thinking out of the fly here, but um, cause I don't I don't write shit down. All right, I don't really have time right now. But this is just uh, I shoot. This is an open shoot, in my opinion, an open shoot of opinions that I'm trying to, trying to vouch for, and I'm trying to put out there. Maybe you have a different opinion yourself. Who knows? If you got anything, say something, and I like to talk about it. But in the meantime, um, yeah, it's just 2007, and that, that was a year in professional wrestling that really griped my ass. Um, because if you look at it this way, once once the, the 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 John Cena started taking over the main event scene, you know. Eddie Guerrero, John Bradshaw Layfield, Undertaker, and then, you know, um, Randy Orton started taking over, and then John Cena. We're like, oh, okay, so here's here comes a new batch of, new batch of superstars coming in, and they're going to make the product more, more interesting with fresh new matches. But the problem is, um, it, it lasted a year, and we're thinking, okay, well, Maybe they haven't fully finished their rivalries yet. Then another year passes by, and it's the same shit. Day in, day out. In my opinion, because this is what I think about wrestling's downfall. This is how I think what, start, what started the downfall. I think it happened right after... Well, I was going to say WrestleMania 23. But I think, in my opinion, it's st it started... Going down a tread hill, a, a tr down a down a, a downfall. Back in once after backlash of 2007. That was probably one of the last great pay-per-views that they've shown right before shit started changing. 
because he had a Undertaker versus Batista in a in a Last Man Standing match. That was good. That was a good ass match. I'll review that show some other time. There was also a fatal four way match between John Cena, Edge, Shawn Michaels, and Randy Orton. I believe I, I have to look that up. But um, yeah. But it was a good show. Sadly, in my opinion, it was the last good show that they probably would put for a long time. Because putting in putting on good shows would only be sparingly. I'll give you an example. WWE Judgment Day 2007. What was the main event of that show? It was John Cena versus Great Khali for the WWE Championship. And that match sucked. That match was boring. It sucked. And, and this never it, it, it never got me interested in the matchup. It was like it was just a bit of over exaggeration by by Michael Cole and 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 JBL or I'm I'm sorry. Um it was Jim Ross and Jerry King Lawler. I just think it just it was overly excessive and with the a hype. And and you think because a, a seven foot four giant like Great Collie, guy could barely fucking it's a re, it's a regular it's a regular traditional matchup a regular one on one matchup no stipulations. It's just a regular matchup. The guy can't fucking wrestle. He can't fucking wrestle. He can barely move around that ring. You give him a small space, you give a big guy a small space to move around, he's not going to move very well. It's just a basic life. I, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot four, and I can barely move around in a, in a fucking small little bunker in a room. Right now I'm in a bunker myself. I can barely move around this fucking thing. But that's beside the point. Point is, is that it was a boring matchup. It was snoozer, and the way the match ended, John Cena gave the Great Kali a submission. It was a STF. He Great Kali taps out. Then, then there's a quote-unquote controversy going around. The controversy is Great Kali had his foot under the ropes, and the referee didn't see it. I mean, that is just my opinion. That is not exciting, nor nor interesting. It just doesn't get me into it. I'm sorry, but you know what? It just doesn't. And if you look at the rest of the show, there was um, probably like two more matches going around. There was probably um, there was probably two other matches that were on the undercard that was kind of noticeable. Uh, that would be the Bobby Lashley ECW Championship match versus Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon, and uh, Umaga. You remember him, Umaga. Um, that was not a good match either. It wasn't. I'm sorry. It just wasn't. It, I, it was a it was a five at the most, and uh, it just perplexed my mind of how they try to get um, the McMahons over. I don't know why. Why would he be ECW champion? Beats me. I think. I think, in my opinion, it was a personal gripe that he fucking had with them. Well, I don't know why, but you know that's what happened back in those days. I think still to this day he has a fucking gripe. It's just only my personal opinion. That's why we have the. Well, that's just what this is about. A, a live, live blog to you know tell you what you, to tell, so I can tell what I think. Not pin the champion, therefore, still ECW champion, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. That's what he fucking, and of course people started booing, but I'm like, well, okay, so he's still declaring himself champion. What else is there? That's it? That's all you can fucking get? I mean, that's just dumb. And then um, number three, the third factor that which made me, which probably might have played a role in the downfall. And that show, at least in that show, which probably was 
planting the seeds for what ended up being a shitty era. Um, Randy Orton versus Shawn Michaels, that, that pay-per-view. Judgment Day 2007. That match sucked too. A big dong. It, it, I, I, the the storyline was when Shawn Michaels was attacked during an interview uh, during the show by Randy Orton. And like saying they probably possibly was not medically cleared. Kayfabe. So, um, so the match happens anyway. Seven, eight minutes into the matchup, Shawn Michaels is going to pull off a pull off a face comeback here. You know he's going about to um, about to uh, come, make a miracle comeback because the face is trying to go after the heel. The good good guy is going after the bad guy. He's trying to beat him. For trying to quote unquote severely injure him, he gets tries to line him up for sweet chin music, and just before he about to kick him, Shawn Michaels collapses. Now, in Vince's idea, Vince's mind, that's supposed to add for drama, drama and in an intense, scary quote unquote situation that could happen. But I didn't fucking buy it. I didn't buy it. It was bullshit. And, I, and it looked so phony and fake and dumb. And you knew it was... You knew it was perplexed. You knew it was set up like that. And then... And how did the fucking people in the, the crowd think about that? There was... Uh, watch that show. And then you see... Right after when he collapses... You can hear the crowd reaction... Right after when before he about to pull that sweet chin music, then he starts collapsing. You can hear some some people in that crowd actually laugh. You can hear them laugh. He was like, Sean Mike's about to set up sweet chin music on Randy Orton. And he collapsed. And you can hear some people go, ah. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like that was it? That's all you could do? You mean to tell me you guys hit chairs? You guys smashed through tables, jumped off ladders, hell in the cell cages, top of the cages, off the top rope, and do a suicide dives and all that. You mean to tell me the best thing you could do, the most dramatic and ex exhilarating thing that you could possibly do, is is a collapse? See, people, some wrestling fans, they're not stupid. We know what's going on. Well, at least some wrestling fans. But, you know... It just it just baffles my mind in a way of how shitty that show was. The only matchup that I found that that was good at that show was probably the Chris Benoit MVP match for the United States title. And that was probably average at best. Probably a 6, 6.5. But anyway, I, I, I'm not reviewing... I'm not doing a review here. This is another... This is just... I could do that on, on an episode of wrestling enthusiasts but that's for another time well that's probably the best matchup that you have on that show united states title mvp won him and beat him i'm not going to talk about chris benoit because obviously once i talk about him because people are going to think oh but that man that was a month before that murder suicide i'm, ah, I'm not going to talk about that that's for another time but um um this it's just, in my opinion, that whole entire show began the shit show of what was the downfall of professional wrestling, in my opinion. At least for the late 2000s. And the next month, we had a pay-per-view called WWE One Night Stand. And that show, that show we were treated to, you know, us wrestling fans... We were treated to a show where it was extreme rules, anything goes, all the matches were stipulated. That was what was happening. And, um, that one, because two years before that, um, ECW, they did an ECW brand one night stand show. And trust me, people were crazy. Pe the crowd was crazy. They were cussing up a storm. They were, they were yelling out, fuck you, smack. They were just you know, all kinds of crazy shit. And I think they try... I think Vince tried to avoid that. So he made it WWE One Night Stand. 
that show, eh, it was okay. It was good. If you're going to watch a good show, I mean, I mean if you're going to watch a good match out of that show, I, I, the top three sh matches, in my opinion, would probably be the latter match between Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin versus the Hardy Boys, both Matt and Jeff. That was a good match. Um, another one that I thought was good, it was short, but it was pretty good. Um, it would be the, uh, the ECW originals against the new breed in a tables match. That was pretty good too. Short match, but it was okay. And then another match that was in the, that was third in my opinion. Well, actually, I take that back. I put I put that tables match number three. Number two was that extreme rules match between Bobby Lashley and the McMahons and Umaga. That extreme rules match that was good, very good. Fucking F, F, it was probably like a seven worth. But anyway, I'm not rating. Just saying, giving a, giving an opinion about it. One match that I didn't put in the top three was probably the John Cena and John Cena and uh, Great Khali matchup. There was a false count anywhere match, and uh, that one was um, well, it was pretty good. It was good, better than Judgment Day, which was fucking abysmal. That just sucked. It's because Great Khali can't fucking wrestle. John Cena is a good brawler. He fits into no DQ matches, street fights and all that, and false count anywhere matches, last man standing, any of those type of matches. He's very good at those matches. He's just not good at wrestling. That's just my personal opinion on him. I don't have a gripe against him. I don't have a gripe against any talent. I just I just think personally, you know, some some wrestlers, some superstars. I think some of them are just good at certain things than they are at others. Some are I, I've based two types of wrestlers. A wrestler and a brawler. That's my that's why I classify it. It doesn't matter what fighting style, you could be in Muay Thai kickboxing or Taekwondo or or Greco Roman freestyle or you could be in um, Kung Fu or all that shit. You could be like Xia Li. And be kung fu and all that shit, but not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is that there's different styles out there, but each different style has a certain, in my opinion, subcomponent of it. One is brawling. One is wrestling. It's just that simple. There's a lot of cruiserweights out there that are less than 250 pounds that are good wrestlers. Then there's some heavyweights out there that weigh more than 260 pounds. They're good brawlers. The vast majority of them are good brawlers. But some rest, some wrestlers that are crude that are under 250 pounds could could brawl. There's others that are over 250 pounds that are good wrestlers. So you just never know. This is contrast of styles. But anyway, back back to my, my opinion. Um one Night Stand was a good show. wasn't bad. wasn't great, but it wasn't it wasn't innovative or anything like that. But it was good too. But once once uh, WWE Vengeance started coming around, WWE Vengeance Night of Champions 2007, uh, which was a fateful night, by the way. We under we, if you're a wrestling fan, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention that because I already said it earlier. I'm not. That's for another time. Um. It was an average show at best. Probably the best matchup was probably that Fatal Five Way. I, I, mean, I could be wrong. I, I have to look up the card, but it involved. This the match that involved Mick Foley and John Cena. Yeah, if you remember that one, um, that match was pretty good, pretty good. So. But, I mean, all the other matches were at least average at best. Wasn't very, wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. And then, once after Great American Bash, 
and SummerSlam, Unforgiven, uh, No Mercy. Once those shows started popping up, it was, I started to notice a pattern that they couldn't do no better than average. That was the problem. They couldn't do no better than average, and uh, it, it kind of upset me. It griped my ass because I couldn't understand why the fuck that they they were doing so many. They did s such good shows the year before. The year before that, and the year before that, well, 2004, it's 50-50. Um, but um, still, I mean, you, you had you you put in good shows. 2007 wasn't really that much of a good show year. Great American Bash. The main event was Bobby Lashley and John Cena, but one of the matches was was uh, Randy Orton versus Dusty Rhodes in a Texas bull rope match. And that match was subliminal, to say the least. Dusty Rhodes was an old man. And he's getting whooped with a bell, whooped with a, with, a, with a bull rope with a cowbell on it. Basically like a four corners match. But gimmicky, but sucky. Anyway... Uh, that that and then another thing it was pretty sad in my opinion it was the last cruiserweight championship match and uh i don't know it was like some sort of a six pack challenge or something or anybody in the roster that was a cruiserweight uh, was eligible to to win the cruiserweight championship and hornswoggle won the title and then after that they retired the championship and to me, that was probably the beginning of shit. Because he got a lep, he got a uh, four foot two leprechaun. You know, uh, no, nothing gets Hornswoggle. I like the guy; he's factually funny. But that's not that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that they're killing the title, and that's what they did. One week later, on an episode of SmackDown, they killed the title, and it will never be mentioned again. It was officially retired. This is a way of killing off an entire division of good, talented, hard-working wrestlers that were basically getting pissed and shit on. Then SummerSlam came around. I dubbed it as one of the worst SummerSlams I've ever seen. Besides 2004 and besides 1995. 1995, you had that gimmicky shit. Nothing on that show was watchable, except for maybe Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon in the ladder match part two, part two, and um, everything else was shit. The main event was Diesel versus Mabel for the WWF title. Who the fuck is going to want to watch that? No disrespect to Kevin Nash, no disrespect to Mabel, God bless his soul, but no. I'm not I'm not gonna watch that shit. It's just fucking boring. Maybe I'll put it maybe I'll put it on when if I wanna go to sleep and take a nap. That's how the show was. That's how bad the show was. Two thousand four was no better. It it, it it had a bunch of crappy booked match. They put Triple H Triple H against Eugene. You remember that guy? Remember that guy, Eugene? Not gonna mention about him. Not gonna talk about him. I don't hate the guy. I, I mean, I like the guy because you know he did, he did legendary gimmicks. Like he did moves that legends did. I mean, I like that, but that's not my point. He's 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 basically was a mid Carter at best, and you pit him against Triple H. I don't get that booking. Undertaker against JBL for the WWE title. It was a terrible fucking match. The only matchup that was good in that show was Randy Orton against Chris Benoit. By the way, I spelled Chris Benoit C C H C R I S P E N and then Wa W A H Chris Benoit. Get it? Okay, enough bullshit. Um, him and Randy Orton had a had an excellent matchup, which is probably right up there in the sevens, maybe the eights. But that's it. Nothing else was good. 2007 was just like that. 
And Randy Orton and John Cena were wrestling each other again, which was probably be one out of many billion fucking times. That, that, which I'll get back to that in a second. But it was one of a billion fucking times that they would wrestle each other. And hence, in my opinion, the downturn of of what was the rest in the wrestling business, in my opinion. WWE. They 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 started to scale down on a lot of things. That's my that's my gripe about it. They scaled down so much on a lot of shit and just didn't work. You had Unforgiven. You had Hell you got um No Mercy. Then you had um which the only thing I remember for that show was Triple H wrestled three times. Uh, Randy Orton twice and Umaga once. And then and then you had that infamous Punjabi prison match. Great Kali and Batista. And that was a abysmal. You ever notice that Punjabi prison matches always suck? Especially if you watched Battleground 2017. You ever notice that? But anyway, uh, Survivor Series is probably the main sunlight of the clouds of the shitstorm. If anything, if you pass the 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 terrible Divas Survivor Series match, and then you pass that horrible Kali Hornswoggle matchup, which was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, you watch that Hell in a Cell match. And, um, Batista, Batista and who wrestled? Is Batista and Randy Orton? I believe it might have been Batista. And Randy. I have to double check on that. But anyway, well, Edge interferes in the Hell in a Cell match. He poses as a cameraman and hits Batista in the head with it. If you know what I'm talking about, because I know what I'm talking about, but it just I'm just have to pop it out of my mind. Remember, um, this live blog, I don't do, I don't write down notes. I just, you know, tell you what I think it pops in my mind. So anyway, Chris Jericho returns and then heads to Armageddon. So, okay, all right, fine. I'm going to stop talking about that year. My main gripe, and this is my main point, just 2007 was the beginning of a down downfall of the business, in my opinion. Once 2008 started to come, you noticed that a lot of these matchups started to go at a slower pace. And not only at a slower pace, they also started to get come up with dumb rules. I mean, if you watch the 2008 Royal Rumble, Finley hit, starts hitting people with, sh with shillelaghs. With a shillelagh, and he starts knocking people's knees out and starts cracking them in the head with it and all that stuff. But he gets disqualified. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the fucking phone here. He gets disqualified at the Royal Rumble? What? It's a it's a Royal Rumble match. There's no disqualifications. Not in 2008. It wasn't. But, you know, <laughs> this was Vince's idea. It was stupid and ignorant. It was, he wasn't thinking because he wanted to do something new and it sucked. But anyway, uh, yeah, well, No Way Out was... Yeah, a lot of these shows, just a lot of the Monday Night Raws and the Tuesday Night Smackdowns, in my opinion, I just, I just wasn't really that much interested in watching them that much anymore. I mean, if I wanted to watch them, I watch recaps, but that was it. I just wasn't really much interested in it because the storylines got stupid and they got slow. And then once that's, once, it just griped me because I was like, what the fuck am I watching here? It's like the the, the action's gotten slower. I don't understand it. Gimmicky, almost, but not quite. Uh, probably, I mean, besides that parking lot brawl from the Great American Bash 2008 between JBL and John Cena, um, what else can I say? I mean, but that's extreme rule type matchups. I mean, I'm talking about professional, regular professional wrestling matchups. That fit for a wrestler. Not fit for a brawler, fit for a wrestler. Because those matches that One Night Stand or which is now dubbed Extreme Rules, those matches are for brawlers. And that's what that shit's about. 
not for wrestlers, for brawlers. But anyway, um, then they had a Night of Champions pay per view that sucked. That SummerSlam was okay. It was actually decent. It was actually pretty good. I actually liked that SummerSlam that year. But here, but here, here's the point. We started seeing a lot of matchups between Batista and John Cena. John Cena versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton versus Batista. Rey Mysterio versus Kane. Kane versus Rey Mysterio. Kane versus Batista. Kane versus CM Punk. CM Punk versus JBL. JBL versus Randy Orton. And you know what I'm saying. Edge. Edge was talented. He played heel pretty good. But anyway. Um, I just... The action started getting slower. And after No Mercy, it really started... After No Mercy of 2008, it really started to show. Survivor Series, it was an di- abysmal show. Armageddon, not that much better. 2009 hits. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention. In August of 2008, that was when Vince had the... Um, the the brilliant idea to make the the show PG rated and family friendly, which was bullshit because you can't if if, 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 if a fighting sport or if it, you want to call it a sport I mean it is a sport in my opinion because you know you think there's a lot of physicality involved there's a lot of athleticism that's why McMahon calls it sports entertainment but it's wrestling it's wrestling dick anyway. Um, but fact of the matter, you make you're gonna make something family friendly, and then here's what I started to notice: any time a wrestler started getting cut, they stopped the match midway through the match. They sent a doctor in, and they freaking put on some gloves and they start cleaning up his wound. I mean, okay, I get that they wanna they wanna be more safer, but there was that one point in time where it, they kept doing it every two minutes. It was stupid. And I'll give you I'll give you a notable time. 2010, over the limit. Watch that match between Rey Mysterio and CM Punk. Watch the watch um CM Punk gets busted open. By accident, not on purpose. They kept stopping the match every two fucking minutes. And the reason for it is because it's fucking PG. Fucking pathetic garbage. 2009 and 2010, in my opinion, besides the invasion of Nexus, was among, in my opinion, personal, and I take it with gripe, because it grinds my fucking balls every time I hear talk about it. It fuck, it's, it's a shitty era because they couldn't do diddly dick with any anything innovative. They couldn't have good wrestling matches. They end up slowing the action down. It, it, it wasn't about um, technical holds with arm drag takedowns and all that. They thought a wrestling match was basically a punch and a kick and a slow grinding uh, arm lock takedown and a hold. But it was slow and dull and, and it was fucking see-through. I just don't understand why they thought, oh, well, this is going to get us money. It's just Vince McMahon thought it would be a good idea. But it wasn't. It sucked. And I didn't watch Raw. I didn't watch SmackDown during those times. I mean, except for when the, the, the Nexus invaded. I mean, yeah, I tuned in when Bret Hart came back in 2010. I tuned in when was those times he made those appearances. Yeah, I tuned in. I thought it was good. But... The show was shit. I mean, Sheamus made his debut and all that, and so you got other Jack Swagger and them. But the bullshit about it was that. Oh yeah, and by the way, they got rid of ECW that year, which was was horrible. There was a no disqualification match between Sheamus and Goldust, and it was the putrid pile excuse to use a no disqualification stipulation. The only weapon that they used was a ring post. That was it. Boring. Stupid. And a waste of time. Waste of breath. Why the fuck have a dis- why the fuck have a stipulation if you're not gonna use it? 
But anyway, um, 2010, 2009, 2010, just among the worst, the worst action I've ever seen, in my opinion. Over exaggeration and commentary and too much bullshit. When the Nexus invasion came along during that time, it made it somewhat watchable. There was some type of crazy moments here and there. I enjoyed that. Unfortunately, they, chor they choreographed the, the storyline a bit too much, and they, they kind of fucked, fucked that up. This is when, in my opinion, they started hiring these bullshit shitty writers and these bookers that sucked, that sucked big dick. They just fucking didn't do their fucking job right. And it made it look stupid. They couldn't do certain moves. They couldn't do certain things. Uh, and and then I, I, have a, I have a hunch that they started, they couldn't use per, certain terms. And I think this is when Vince McMahon started to become a fucking douche. And he started becoming about, I mean, I'm not going to gripe Vince McMahon wholeheartedly. But I think, you know, he, because I've heard. And I don't know, but I heard that he has an inferiority complex. He gets angry very quick over the dumbest things. That's all I'm saying. Just, a, just, a, just a, what I heard. I just heard it through the grapevine, and that's what I, that's what I uh, heard with my own two ears. But that's we can talk about that some other time. I'm just talking about my personal gripe about the the downfall of those, those last couple of years I'm talking about. So, um, the the wrestling got shittier. the The shows got shittier. They were okay with doing average, and you know the, the M TNA Impact Wrestling's failed attempt at a Monday Night War when they brought Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff in, and they they couldn't draw. They they drew a lot of, of ratings for the first episode the same night that Bret the Hitman Hart came back on Monday Night Raw. They drew a lot of people. But here's the problem. Uh, Dixie Carter, who owned uh, TNA at the time, and the one that was writing the show was Vince Russo, which, in my opinion, the biggest dickhead in wrestling history. Dixie Carter, I call her the Sarah Palin of wrestling because she's fucking clueless. She's fucking clueless. She don't know how to fucking run a company. The only thing she ever did was run... Was run it out of three three networks and drain the drain the company out of money. That's all she fucking did. So she didn't know how to run against WWE. <clears throat> anyway, excuse me. Anyway, back to uh, my gripe about that those years. They were making the show so family oriented; it was completely unwatchable. In my opinion. Don't worry though. Because not all hope was lost. 2011 was the year that CM Punk had his famous uh, rant on Monday Night Raw. Once that rant hit, hit the waves, I was like, oh shit. Because when The Rock came back in February of 2011, it was fine. But it produced a shitty WrestleMania that year. Watch Undertaker and Triple H for that show. I mean, watch that match instead of the rest of the show because the rest of the show was shit. Um, once CM Punk had his famous rant, I the wrestling re, the wrestling industry, in my opinion, started to slowly change back to to what they were doing back in the past. Slowly but surely. They still were doing shit wrong. They still made bad booking decisions. They still still fucked up on storylines. But, you know, in my opinion, they were doing better than they were the year before. It wasn't wasn't see through. And it wasn't uh it wasn't horrible. So I agreed. I I I, I liked it. Two thousand twelve wasn't that bad of a year either. Except if you count June, July. <laughs> that SummerSlam sucked. That was my, again, my opinion only. 
the, I think the, my, well, the second half of 2012 sucked, but in my, but still, they're still doing shit that was worth, that made you watch. And they, at least they made you watch. Um, not to gripe on the divas either, and the women wrestlers, but during that period of time too, it just was horrible. I'm sorry. That wasn't, that wasn't until AJ Lee came along. She kind of made it watchable. I mean, Caitlyn, she did a good job. But I think AJ Lee did a better job, in my opinion, being a champion. But, and I'll take a talk about that afterwards, but we're kind of running a little bit out of time. Bottom line, though, we've the difference between what made the Attitude Era so successful... They were doing a lot of innovative shit, storyline-wise. Um, storyline-wise, superstar-wise, everybody was getting a push one way or another. You know, nobody was getting griped at, nobody was getting resented on. I mean, except for somebody that wanted to jump ship WCW, but that's like that's like jumping into a that's like jumping into a cruise boat and then jumping off and and then trying to jump into a raft. That doesn't make any sense, but. Um, that was their decision. So, um, so everything was different back then. Yeah, we had a few of the same matchups. Rock and Stone Cold had a hell of a rivalry. But, but here's the thing. The main events were always different, no matter what. They always tried to switch it up. No DQ, Hell in a Cell, uh, fucking, um, cage match, um, Paul's Count Anywhere. They always switched it up. Once 2007, and in the Ruthless Aggression era, they did the same thing. They switched it up every now and then. Three stages of hell, Elimination Chamber, um, Stretcher Match. Remember Brock Lesnar Brick Show, Judgment Day 2003? That's what I'm talking about. Um, they switched it up. It was always different. But once 2007 hit, went downhill. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion on that. And, uh, and I've noticed ever since 2004 or 2005, you ever notice the rivalries don't really change? Some of the same superstars are still, even to this day, they're still here. You got Rey Mysterio, even though I don't know if he's a main event player anymore, but, you know, I mean, still, I mean, he, he's, he's still around. Randy Orton's still around. John Cena pops up, and it's 2019! I'm not griping against these guys. I like these guys. But the problem is is that there's, I know there's somebody in that locker room in this day and age that's itching for a push. I know there's a few of them out there. Seth Rollins, I know for sure, is going to get a push. He's going to get a push against Brock Lesnar. Just wait and see. But... Anyway, we didn't notice any change until like 2014, pretty much. Once after CM Punk left the company because he was visibly frustrated, which I really don't blame him because they were booking him stupidly and they were booking him to lose. They made him look like they made him look weak against against uh, Brock Lesnar and um, the Money in the Bank ladder match and Undertaker and um, The Rock. They made him look weak, and he didn't wasn't taking shit on that. I don't blame him. I don't blame him for leaving. But anyway, they had no choice but to put Daniel Bryan over at WrestleMania that year, 2014. Then he got seriously injured. So what the fuck happened then? Make him drop the title. And what happened? And who guess who wins the title? John Cena. Like I said, I don't have nothing against the guy. I like the guy. He's a great superstar. I've heard he's a great, great person in person. I heard he's a really cool guy. But to be pushed again, it made me like, it's like it made me think, what the fuck is going on? Only get his ass handed at SummerSlam 2014, which, in my opinion, it was an average show. I did not attend that one, but I, I've, I've, I was thinking about it, but 
it was average. We started seeing these up-and-coming superstars like Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. We started seeing Dean Am the Shield members, Roman Reigns. We started seeing um, uh, Dean Ambrose and uh, Seth Rollins. We started seeing these guys started picking up steam. We saw, of course, we saw Damian Standow. Then we saw um, Cody Rhodes turn into Stardust. We kind of got that. Roman Reigns was injured. I guess he had some sort of back issue and hernia or something. I wasn't sure, but it happened somewhere around uh, September of 2014. It was like the same pay-per-view of the Night of Champions, I believe. I'm not quite sure. I have to double-check. But uh, he was injured. And it took three months off. So once uh, he came back a couple of weeks before the Royal Rumble, he was going to get a push. And um, if you go to my DailyMotion.com channel, you will notice that I, get, I gave a quickie review. It wasn't a full episode, but it was a quickie review of the 2015 Royal Rumble, and I stated it was one of the worst Royal Rumbles I ever watched. I'm still sticking to that fucking opinion. They made Roman Reigns look strong after an injury. Nothing wrong with Roman Reigns. Like I said, I don't have nothing. They're just doing the job. They're just, they're just, um, they're, they're just doing what they're told. That's all it is. There's, you know, if you, you can't get blamed for doing your job. But it's just stupid fucking booking. And a lot of fans saw that. A lot of wrestling fans saw that. And they were against it. Me, that personally stained... Well, I mean... A lot of wrestling fans boo him all the time. But... Uh, I mean, right at this point right now... You know, he's battling his leukemia battle. But I'm pretty sure he'll be cheered now. But, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But... He was booed during that time. Between that... Between then... And uh, the very latter part of last year. So... Okay, so at least the good news about it, though, for this era, modern era that we're seeing, between 2015 and right now, we're starting to see a bit more interesting things here and there. However, and and that's another gripe of mine, sometimes there's some people in the internet wrestling community that talk a lot of big shit, but they can't do a fucking thing. They've gone on Superstars' Twitters and Instagrams, they start talking shit to them, to their face. Doesn't anyone just shut the fuck up and just watch the show anymore? Maybe even take it in and think about it? I mean, you look at it how it is these days. So a lot of these, some of these superstars are getting pushed now. I like that. I like what's going on. Um... Um, well, I'm looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward to Becky Lynch getting her push at WrestleMania. I'm glad Asuka's getting a push. You know what I like to see get pushed? I like to see Sami Zayn get pushed for a title run. Um, women's tag team titles? Well, since it's a fairly new title, uh, Bailey. And Sasha Banks, I, I think they'll probably defend their title. It might be a fatal four-way matchup at WrestleMania. They'll, they'll defend it some way. I'm just thinking it might be Raw and SmackDown and NXT. Well, you know, there'll be three, three teams. But anyway, well, I mean, if. So my final thought, I'm going to close the, the blog out on this, is that 2007 through 2000 and through the latter part of 2010, there was among the worst wrestling action, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. Slow, unsteady, boring matchups. Storylines were dead to me. Not all of it was bad. Some were good. 
they could, but they, but just my gripe is that they could do better than that. They they could have done better, and luckily we're we're starting to see some of that little by little. I grant I grant it. There's some stupid booking decisions, and yes, a lot of bookers and writers need to get their asses riped on because they need to get crit constructive criticism. Yes, I believe that. I do believe that. Not because of the talent. It's because of the bookers. Some of them are shitheads. But, you know, I mean, hey, what can I say? I mean, I don't like the way Vince McMahon is treating NXT. I don't like the way he's treating those superstars from there. You just called up... You just called up Lacey Evans. You called up... Um, you called up uh, Nikki Cross. You called up EC3. And, and, and well, who are those two that we... Uh, well, I'll talk about it afterwards. I, I slipped through my fucking mind. I don't know why. But, but there was two more call-ups. And then Lars Sullivan. Which he's not... He's, he's, he's gone AWOL. I don't know what the hell happened to him, but of course, uh, to my, to to a story that I followed, he's been uh, he's been evaluated for mental illness because uh, uh, word had it that he was about to make a premiere on Monday Night Raw and suffered an anxiety attack. So that's what I've only heard, but we haven't really heard much about him though. He's been he's stood home. He hasn't been around ever since then. So I don't know what they're gonna do with him. But that's not Triple H's fault. That's nobody's fault. That's just something that happened. Vince McMahon tried to blame that on Triple H. And that's why they kind of griped a little bit. Vince McMahon has no faith in the younger talent. I don't know. I'm like, why Why would you still... Okay, why would you still want to, to keep Randy Orton relevant after all these fucking years? From 2002 all the way to 2019, currently where we're at right now, the the wrestlers that are they're getting older and they're getting slower. Why do you still want think that they're relevant? And just because a guy is big, you know, doesn't mean doesn't mean that he's a, a good brawler. Doesn't mean he's a good wrestler either. I don't understand that logic. Vince McMahon, in my opinion, like slow. Like slow holding matchups that he, he relates to from the 70s and the 80s. And sorry, but that shit don't fly anymore. There's a reason why a lot of NXT superstars get big pops. They do they do some crazy innovative shit. I think personally, my opinion, I think Vince McMahon just stepped down. But and he's not going to do that. He won't. He won't do that. Another thing too. I think producer Kevin Dunn should step down. I have a gripe against him because he's a fuck nut. Um. He he wants. He thinks that wrestling is entertainment. I mean, um, depends on how you you look at it personally. <laughs> but um, if you're a wrestling fan, you take it to the heart. But I. <sighs> Kevin Dunn is trying to turn turn a, a sport into a drama. You just storyline wise, you can create drama, but you can create athleticism. You can't do one at a time. You can do both. If you do both, you'll get a lot of praise by the fans. Trust me, you will. But anyway, the only way my final th I'm, I'm close I'm gonna close the blog out on this. The only way you're gonna look at this from time and time and time again is that if some of the younger some of the younger talent out there are gonna want to push eventually, make them relevant, make them good, make them uh, you know make them noticeable so that way people. Could watch watch Monday Night Raw or SmackDown and say, "Hey, there's what's his name? There's Ethan Carter three, EC three. Hey, there's um Aleister Black. Oh, hey, there's um 
There's um Io Shirai, Kyrie Sane. There's um um Sh Sh Shayna Baszler, the four horsewomen of MMA. Let's use them. Oh my God. You know, and there's some uh, mid cards. I think those are some push, some way or another. I mean, I, I personally think that'd be good. But there's some talent out there, and, and you know what? I'm looking forward to Kevin Owens coming back. I'm looking forward to Sami Zayn coming back. I think they, they deserve a push too, world title push, or intercontinental title push too. Finn Balor's doing a hell of a job. He deserves a title. That Intercontinental title, he deserves that. Now who's next in line? That's what we have to do. That's what we have to think. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this uh, live blog here. And... Um, who knows, you know, maybe we'll see some success stories here and there. Maybe we'll make it more interesting. Just as long as they keep it happy, as long as they keep the talent happy and prevent them from jumping ship to a AEW. Because in my opinion, you got to watch out for them because they're going to go after their ass. Especially if it's backed up by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. And uh, Kenny Omega is also backing them up with a billionaire owner, in my opinion... He owns the Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe. Sounds like a Ted Turner situation. So, WWE, get your shit together. That's all I can say. I'm pretty... If if, if there would be any uh, simplistic idea that they would uh, put their talent over, I think they would go far. I think that's the best thing that they could do right now. Anyway, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to close the program out on this. Um, if any of you guys have joined in, I'd like to thank you guys for joining in. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, live blog and my personal opinions of certain things, certain things about the wrestling industry. And um, uh, just out of the fly, I did not write shit down. I just gave an honest opinion and, my, and just popped through my head. So uh, thank you guys for joining in. And until, until we make up another blog. And um, also to let you guys know, the Wrestling Enthusiast is coming back March 2019. And um, which pay-per-view I'm going to review, um, just ju just keep an eye out for that. I'm going to also introduce a new segment that's going to involve some sort of trivia. I, it's going to be called, I Got a Question for You. So keep an eye on that. Um, so anyway, guys, hope you guys, ha you ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. And as always, keep on watching. Have a good one.